Welcome to the Saturday edition of The Box Seat. I'm Adam McGrath and joined by Mark Owens. Mark, feels like a lifetime since I've seen your face, but we're back and we're back at Ascot. I'm looking forward to the race. Indeed. Great to be back here with you, Adam, and great to have our Singapore viewers back as well. Oh, I can't believe uh, we're back at Ascot. First crown opening day and uh, should be a great day of racing with the Group 3 Northerly Stakes headlining the card. Yeah, there is some great races and we can guarantee one thing, that Cerise and White are going to be prominent throughout this card as they always are when we get to the business time of the season. Let's take a look at the conditions that we are going to be faced with for the first race meeting at Ascot. The Mooble Rail is out six metres. Surprise, surprise, a couple of showers around on a Saturday after a very good week, but we should be in for a very good race day. Let's get straight into it. Race number one for the two-year-olds over 1,000 metres, Mark. Yeah, just a few showers in the morning, so don't get turned off if you're coming down to the track. This two-year-old race, it's the second two-year-old race of the season, and it is a cracker. There are some really nice types in here, but our replay horse will be number one, Golden Trigger. The cutaway is no man owner. Towards the tail of the field, Country Durham, and now wider on the track is Keeper Keen. They fan down the straight, out in front, we have Golden Trigger shaking off the challenge of Pokemon Pete and down the outside Siani's coming into it nicely but Golden Trigger with a kick finds something kicked away by about two and a half Siani moved into second place down the outside Keeper Keen but Golden Trigger wins by three and a half Nice performance there by Golden Trigger uh, got away nicely was actually really quickly out of the gates then settled well was under pressure down the straight but was able to win by three lengths however although it was a three length margin I actually really prefer Simon Miller's galloper there Siani uh, the Philly by Sebring now. It jumps from a wider gate here, but just thought a bit like we'd seen in, in the previous two-year-old race, the last race of the season at Belmont Park. This horse just wasn't asked to do a lot. I think it has a lot more improvement up its sleeve and uh, will certainly be attacking the line strongly. I think these two will definitely be prominent. It was a very good trial. I think it's probably stronger than the other trials, but I'd be leaning towards Simon Miller's Galloper. Yes, you can make positives for both sides of it. Our golden Trigger was certainly tapped along and told to keep its mind on the job for Brad McDougall, of course, the chief Foreman for uh, Steve Wolf, but I really like the trial. It was tapped along. Willie White gets the ride, which is great to see Pearly White get the ride. But as you mentioned, to see Annie as well, it wasn't knocked about, but still hit the line very strongly. So, look, a lot to like about both of them. As I mentioned uh, when we had a look at our previous two year old race, what I look for the horses jumping out well and with the good manners that proved with Akinar Star travelling three wide and he just jumped the best and he was the cleanest away and had the best racing manners. And I think Golden Trigger from Barrier 5 should go to the front and be mighty hard to beat on a fresh Ascot patch, Adam. Yeah, it certainly is going to be uh, interesting to see what horses get out the front and play a part. And that's why I don't mind number two, Demons and, and Dust here as well. Look, going into last run, and I've said to you before, even when we step up to distance races, you like to see that run over 2,000. I hate seeing a horse go into a race with only a 400 metre trial. Now, Demons and Dust had had two 400 metre trials, but it raced like that as well. Cruised up as you're approaching the top of the straight. When asked to go at the top of the straight, just went, whew, I'm starting to blow now. I'm a bit fatigued, I don't have much left in me. But I like the run behind Akinar Star and these types. I think we'll take so much improvement from that. I think this is a much weaker race than that two-year-old race which you competed in. You're getting a ridiculous price. Yeah. Seeing $30 plus for this horse, I'm happy to play each way. Yeah, it's a crazy price, isn't it? Well, well uh, bred and well-related galloper as well. But Adam, you mentioned that previous run. It was a little bit tardy in the run, but then it tracked up really nicely and it probably tracked up too nicely. Got on the heels of the leader. Uh, of Brian Kersley's Galloper and uh, sort of just uh, wanted to keep going. If they had been a cutaway, back. it would have gone up and probably loomed and hit the front at one stage. Absolutely, absolutely. And even just got a bit tired and gave up the ghost. But with that experience at the track, you're dead right. $31 is just crazy. And just quickly, Adam, there's another first starter in there. Number three, Classy Marcy from the Jason Pateman Yard. The trial was very nice uh, beating Metallic Queen. Yeah, nice trial. Uh, Metallic Queen was running on strongly. Uh, Classy Marcy was able just to hold it. Uh, Philly by Universal Ruler. We know that these fillies run well well early for the Universal World, expecting a, a good performance here. William Pike on board from Barrier 2 as well. But I'm going to go with number 8, Sienny here. From number 2, Demons and Dust, which is a great each-way bet to start you off. Number 1, Golden Trigger, and 3, Classy Marcy. I certainly don't blame you with going Simon Miller on top, but I've got the 1, Golden Trigger from Brad McDougall Yard. On top of number 3, Classy Marcy, the 2, Demons and Dust, and the 8, Sienny. Race number two at Ascot, although a small field here, only the six runners mark, we get some class. Flying Roars in career best form at the moment. Infatuated is in winning form. Star Exhibit, we know, we saw the trial. This horse is going to have a big campaign and we're expecting Poonamu to play a big part. And then there's another one that's come from over east that certainly looks as though it can play a part. So although just a small field, 
class. Absolutely, Adam. We'll have a look at the replay, though. The trial of Star Exhibit just recently under William Pike over 1,450 metres. By Paul Nashay. Star Exhibit's down the outside and top right of this whacking away back into fourth place. Down the straight they run. Pen Mia Song trying to rally, but Paul Nashay hard ridden the outside. Goes up and hits the front and Star Exhibit's coming home stylishly too. Star Exhibit went up, joined Paul Nashay, drew to the lead, pulled clear and heading towards the line. It's going to be Star Exhibit coming away for a comfortable victory. We know that with racing you can't always be crazy confident and just throw something out, but from that trial, I just can't see how Star Exhibit is going to lose. I think it's a mile better horse than all of these. I think we saw it last campaign. It's going to get a beautiful run. Love the small field. The speed will be on in the race with Flying Roar. And in fact, the way it'll sit there, smoke the pipe, William Pike will say, off you go. And I think the race is done. Yeah, I think it's quite a simple uh, It's quite a simple race for this horse to win. I just think with the preparations it's had as well, the two trials, 950 metres, then 1,450 metres. He's also going to be cherry ripe first up over 1,500 metres. Out of that uh, excellent mare as well, Star Encounter over Jern. This uh, gallop is going to get further and is certainly one to watch out heading towards the bigger races for the Peters camp. Look, it just picks itself. Around it, though, we do have the likes of number three, Abasso. Now, it's opened up at a quite a quite a uh, long price at around $15. I think that's overs. I really liked how Jason Brown took it to the front in the trial. Over Reese, we've seen this horse take a sit and finish off really nicely when under the care of Chris Waller. And the couple of times I remember when it won, Damien Oliver was aboard. And look, this horse certainly has ability. I reckon it could be the one to go forward here and potentially try to pinch it. But I think, look, I think it's fit enough to run a good race. Well, I think the only way that Star Exhibit's going to lose is if one of these horses go to the front and it's a leader's day at Ascot. Now, last year, the opening day at Ascot was absolutely lightning. Uh, the rail was at a different position, of course, but it was lightning inside and you could not catch a leader. Now, that's probably the best chance for some of these runners like Flying Roar and Fafty Wade and Abasso. I thought the trial was good as well, but this horse was under a lot of pressure. Uh, Heart Starter has come out and raced well, obviously, since that trial and winning, but I'm just not sure how this uh, gelding buying Costa de Lago is going to go first up. No doubt it's got class. It's, it definitely does have class, which is proved by the form lines back over race. It's raced against some handy types. Beating the, Uni beating the United States last preparation, uh, United States has gone on to win weight for age group one, so look, not saying that that means he's a certainty here, but he's certainly good enough to win this. Definitely, no doubt at all, but I'm going to go with number two, Star Exhibit. From one, Flying Raw, four infatuated, five through the moon. Go the two on top as well, Adam. Star Exhibit from the three, Abasso, one, Flying Raw, and five, Puna Moo. Race number three at Ascot. It is over the 1,400 metres, an event for the three-year-olds. We saw a couple of these go head-to-head, -head, Mark. We know they've got some class, the likes of Royal Missile, even Sunset Pete. We've seen Samavore race nicely. Minus looks really caught the eye last start as well, so there's a bit of class here. Yeah, Minus looks. He's not much to look at, but he can certainly gallop. Got a peachy ride first up. Let's have a look at that win, beating Kai Perinha. Behind them, in the straight. They've got 350 to go. Sharp Bob on the inside of Alwadi. Wavell Spur joined in, and on the outside also... Uh, coming home quite well as well is Ro uh, Royal Skylab and now Sh uh, Shrew Gamble's putting in a run. Wavell Spur bounded clear. It's Wavell Spur in front. Down the outside Shrew Gamble. Now Dagor Ladd is running on as well and then Reunion Hill but it's Wavell Spur who was well back late in. Really nice performance here by Minus Looks. Could not believe the price that went out that day after that really good debut performance. Jumped at $16 on debut. $15 here. Kuiperinia looked to have the race won probably 200 metres out but Minus Looks just knuckled down late. Showed a really good turn of foot and from that performance is only going to appreciate the 1400. My small concern though is giving classy gallopers like Royal Missile three and a half kilos. Yeah, speaking to Brad McDougal after the race and even Sean McGruddy, they couldn't believe the price that it went off. Mind you, it did need the run. It got all the favours and it got the lovely card up behind Kai Perinha, but that's what it needed to win and to show its best first up. And Brad said off that, he's only got more and more improvement. Whatever he did on the day, he's got plenty more improvement. He's not much to look at. Uh, he's, a, he's a demerit gelding and they, they can be pretty average looking animals, but this horse has a, a motor and it certainly has a sprint on him. There's no reason why he can't win this, even with the 58 and a half kilos here, Adam. We've also got number two Swedish memories. Finally draws a barrier here, barrier two, and will settle in the first half of the field. Hasn't had that luxury yet in its short career but I think it can certainly be a player from that uh, inside gate posse up behind uh, the leader there and finish off very strongly. Yeah, look, I've got my big question marks about Swedish memory. You're going back to last campaign, jumped from barrier two, was beaten three lengths by the river, jumped from barrier six first up in a race which really suited. There was a lot of speed on. They flew out in front on that occasion, got within a half length of G-Boss, which I think the form lines will hold up. You mentioned last start, didn't get the run they would have liked. Barrier two, there is a positive. They had to put a senior rider on this jockey, so a small concern there. The lugging bit goes on. 
just not sure if this gallop is up to the class of a Swedish memories or even a minus looks. I probably agree with you at this stage, but we'll certainly find out how good he is after the weekend. We've also got in the race number eight, Samovar. Now, an impressive last start winner. Speaking to Dan Morton earlier in the week, he said, we put it, we uh, like this filly and we really like the win. So we decided to give her a little freshen up, put her in the paddock for a bit, bring her back because she will be heading towards those good races like the champion fillies, potentially WA Guineas. Of course, nominated over East as well, which just shows the opinion that these guys do have of her. They wanted to make sure that they're at least a chance of going to those races if she showed something. thought the uh, win last start was very good. All reports from inside the stable, they said 1,200 metres is too short, but her class could just be enough. And Sarah Bonner rode her an absolute treat on that occasion. William Pint takes a ride, the 54 kilos. The 1,400 is ideal. There'd be good speed in the race as well. I think some of VAR is certainly a very good chance in this race, but I have to go with the, the Miller runner here, Royal Missile, from one minus looks, eight summer bar and five variation. I'm going with the other Miller runner, the rougher of the two, Swedish Memories from the eight summer bar, one minus looks and four Royal Missile. Race number four at Ascot, it's over the 1,400 metres. And again, another very competitive race here. 11 runners to take a look at, but there's not much between probably the top five or six in this field. Yeah, look, Joannis looked like he had a class edge at the beginning of his career. He's slightly petered out, but I think back to Ascot can certainly play a part. Let's have a look at him beating Cool Image last start. Onto the back of Card Knight and does so now. Outside of it is War God, who's under a lot of pressure. And big setup getting an inside run, and Cool Knight is coming down the outside. But here's Joannis getting out of a pocket and coming after Card Knight with War God and Cool Knight down the outside is Juendis, War God and Card Knight and on the inside kicking back Crusoe, Crusoe, Juendis, they hit it, Juendis. I... Really impressed with the, the run there, Juendis. I know that a lot of people have been knocking this galloper, probably because the price that it's been going out at and then what we've been seeing in the performances. Now, the, the price is, as you said, I mean, you can't just judge by that. Yes, it's been a 3 $4 chance and been losing, but one of the starts, it missed the kick. The other got in a lot of trouble. And now they're chains of racing padding. Normally, this horse over the 1,000 metres was going forward. Since they've stretched out to the 13 and even the 1,200 metres, we've seen this horse go back. Now they get the two kilo claim as well, so they meet War God at the same weights. I'm expecting another really good performance here, and I think it can be the one to beat. Yeah, especially as I mentioned back around Ascot. I think that's a huge advantage. Number four, War God, yeah, comes out of the same race was fifth of 10, but only beaten under a length. It certainly was, but did keep Joendis in for a long time. That was my small concern when having a bit of a look at it, trying to see was there an advantage and because of the barriers, obviously Joendis having nine here, but Paul Harvey kept that galloper in for a long time before Joendis got out. Once it did, was able to pull away quite easily. I think that Joendis will still have uh, the wood just over War God. Number eight, come on board from the Gavin Foster yard. Sarah Bonner claims three kilos here, 51 kilos. Makes it a big advantage. Coming from a Class 1 race where it was beaten by Fern Grove, those are interesting form lines, but uh, certainly a chance. I was keen on it on that chance and had no luck at all. It was wide throughout and still boxed on for, uh, well to only lose by head. Now you drop down from 57.5 kilos to 51 and you get barrier one as well in this horse in a pretty even bunch. Probably a Wednesday bunch can certainly play a part in here. I'll go that way. Each way odds from number three, Juendis. Four, War got it seven. Step right up. I'm going the three, Juendis from the Jimmy Taylor yard. Having a great time of it at the moment. From the two, faux shizzle, four, war god, and seven, step rider. Right